Hello listeners and welcome to another episode of Cult News. I'm your speaker Casey, host of the Cult Vault podcast and if you find this content helpful or interesting please consider liking and subscribing to the YouTube channel or find me at patreon.com forward slash the Cult Vault for ad free and exclusive content. Now on to today's news. A school connected to the troubled teen industry has been the subject of troubled teen industry news for a long time now. The troubled teen industry is an unregulated billion dollar industry that sees multiple agencies, organisations and institutions profiting off of the back of systemic, widespread child abuse. The lack of regulation in these schools that have ties to the 70s destructive cult of Charles E. Diedrich's Synanon see court systems, counsellors, education consultants and tutors profiting often on a type of referral scheme. There are businesses that exist purely to support this industry, including transport services that hire so-called goons to take children in the middle of the night, often in handcuffs or zip ties, to these isolated boarding schools or wilderness programmes or any other number of names given to these, essentially child prison camps. During a child's stay here, they will likely be subjected to multiple cavity searches, unconventional and dangerous therapeutic practices based on Synanon's own destructive practices, and often forced to endure horrific diets, treatment from unqualified and young staff, punishment in the form of silence restrictions or even solitary confinement. And of course, if you have listened to the hours of survivor testimony on the Cult Vault podcast, you will know that it goes much deeper than this. One school in particular has been under scrutiny after allegations of years and years of child abuse have surfaced, with survivors coming forward to speak about the abusive treatment they received during their time within the programme. A gate boarding school in Missouri, according to KSMU.org, was ordered by a judge to be shut down in September 2022. The article by Clara Bates and Tessa Weinberg details how the Christian-based reform school in Stockton has abused students for years. Several survivors are quoted in the article. Hopefully, Agape gets shut down, said Robert Bucklin, a former Agape student who is suing the school. It's been a long time coming, he says. Others have also spoken out. James Griffey, who attended Agape as a student from 1998 to 2001 and left in 2002, said he was grappling with a swirl of emotions Thursday after he learned of the news. He felt excited yet hesitant at the same time after numerous instances where he felt officials were close to shutting down the school only for it to continue to remain open. He says, quote, just because they're on the list doesn't make them a bad person all of a sudden. They've been doing this abuse. They've been abusing kids. They should still shut down the school. There should still be consequences for employing someone like that for however long they did. If the order is executed, it will cease operations of agape and provide appropriate removal of the children currently there, who will be placed into the custody of their parent, legal guardian or other appropriate parties by the court's discretion. While the children await their guardians or, in the case the guardian refuses to pick up the child, the order places the children in the temporary custody of the children's division. However, another recent article on Cedar County Republican and Stockton Journal details how the hearing for the agape school closure has been delayed again. After issues related to motions, the hearing that was scheduled to take place on October 13th did not go ahead. The article details that it is business as usual at the school as the doors remain open and students are still in attendance. And although there is no definite date on when the case will proceed, it has been noted that victims of the school are waiting on, quote, pins and needles to see the agape boarding school finally have its doors closed for good. So far in the Danny Masterson trial... Tony Ortega of the Underground Bunker has been given updates from the courthouse as part of the media attendees with a media pass. Ortega and his team have so far spoken of a notorious Scientology spy in the corridor of the courthouse who was ushered into the courtroom under the welcoming wing of Masterson's defence team. We've been given a witness list of those who will be expected to appear throughout the trial including actress Lisa Marie Presley. Although it is not currently known at this time what side has called what witnesses into court or which side they will benefit, Masterson, Hollywood actor of that 70s show fame and longtime Scientologist, is on trial for allegedly forcibly raping three women during the years of 2001 and 2003. He was first accused of these crimes in 2017 and Tony Ortega has been covering the case ever since it broke, bringing meticulous updates and details. 
The most recent update is that we can expect Judge Olmedo to perhaps make opening statements as early as Tuesday. To keep up with this case, please consider liking and subscribing to this channel or visit TonyOrtega.org for more in-depth coverage. Why.org has a recent article titled How QAnon Became a Movement, Cult and Conspiracy Theory of Everything. In this article, journalist Mike Rothschild, who has actually written a number of the conspiracy books that I own and have read, is the subject of interest after releasing a book titled The Storm is Upon Us, How QAnon Became a Movement, Cult and the Conspiracy Theory of Everything. And then offers a link to listen to a full-length interview with Why.org and Rothschild himself. The QAnon movement, which has its genesis tied up in the controversial website 4chan, has grown into something almost incomprehensible at this stage. Originating in 2017 after some anonymous person or people under the name Q supposedly began dropping top secret information that they had gathered given their position within the government and their supposed Q status clearance, whatever this truly means and whether it actually exists is another thing entirely. Since then, the movement has morphed into its own entity, and we will cover this in more detail around January the 6th. But for more on how QAnon was born, you can check out earlier episodes of my podcast. Joanne Nash and Katie Doyle of Stuff.co.nz have an article this week detailing how Gloria Vale's top leader promises no more abuse at the West Coast cult. Gloria Vale is an isolated Christian community located on the west coast of the South Island in New Zealand and has a population of around 500 members, resides on property owned by a registered charity and the community itself has been the subject of scrutiny and controversy for many years after people came forward detailing their horrific experiences within this insular sect. Lilia Tarawa, granddaughter of the founder of Gloria Vale, appeared in an article by The Guardian in 2017 detailing some of her own personal experiences she was baptised at the age of 10 and talks alongside other survivors of the systemic child beatings and sexual abuse that took place within the community, along with other punishments, regimented doctrine and a strict belief system that left no room for error lest congregants be subjected to harsh treatments in response to their lack of discipline. The Guardian article details that Gloria Vale was founded by the self-styled and self-named Australian religious leader, hopeful Christian, who was convicted and jailed on three charges of indecent sexual assault of a young woman in 1995. The 500 strong community was run according to a strict and oppressive interpretation of fundamental Christianity. However, the article for stuff.co.nz speaks of how Gloria Vale's current overseeing shepherd, Howard Temple, has been talking to the Royal Commission of Inquiry into Abuse in Faith-Based Care on how leaders dealt with sexual abuse after a victim came forward detailing sexual abuse she endured as a child and how the perpetrator was merely put aside before returning to the group and continuing a reign of abuse, which is sadly something we hear about all too often. Temple speaks of how he has been looking at the current way of life within the community and doesn't think their lifestyle is the cause of the sexual abuse, but ends by saying, quote, there will be no more abuse in Gloria Vale. Let's hope that this is truthful and that the correct and lawful approaches will be implemented in this community and followed to protect young and vulnerable people from predators. American actor Cuba Gooding Jr. was the subject of an article on the New York Times this week by Colin Moynihan after pleading guilty to a single harassment charge after a woman accused him of unwanted touching. It was reported that Gooding Jr. will face no prison time. Initially, the judge had agreed to let two women testify in court, but after an agreement was reached where Gooding Jr. would plead guilty to one charge of harassment, he couldn't then be charged again. Multiple women have come forward detailing abuses they endured by Gooding Jr., saying things like, I want to go back to the time when I never had nightmares about fighting off an attacker. Another woman, Kelsey Harbert, addressed the court in person, saying that in many ways the plea agreement with Mr Gooding felt like a betrayal. With a lawyer representing Miss Harbert, Gloria Alred, speaking outside the courthouse, saying the decision of Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg to allow Mr Gooding Jr. to walk away with a deal, which allows him to avoid trial and erases any criminal record, is an insult to many of the accusers. Many people are asking why it seems there is a culture of speaking out against abusers since the Me Too movement really took off, but that status, power, wealth, notability all seem to bring too many abusers some kind of get-out-of-jail-free card, and perhaps literally in this case. That is the end of this week's news. 
you can find today's most recent episode of The Cult Vault, an interview with traumatic narcissist expert Daniel Shaw, psychotherapist and psychoanalyst, on my YouTube channel and also on my podcast RSS feed where there are over 200 episodes for you to enjoy. If you have found this content interesting or helpful, please consider liking and subscribing to the YouTube channel and head over to patreon.com forward slash the cult vault to find ad free and exclusive content. I'm your speaker Casey, host of the cult vault podcast.